music. <clears throat> uh, good morning. My name is Pastor Beth Welch. I'm pastor here at Lord of Life. Welcome if you are joining us online. We're glad to see people back in the sanctuary, too. We'll be continuing uh, to meet in person and on live stream uh, for whenever. Till <laughs> who knows what tomorrow brings, I guess. But we'll have our 8.30 service and our Wednesday evening, which will not be live streamed, but we do meet in person on Wednesday evenings at 6.15. A few announcements. Uh, today is the baptism of our Lord. So if you are at home and you have a child, maybe you want to get a little bowl of water ready for our um, children's message. And an important announcement about our annual congregational meeting. That will be on January 24th um, at 9.30. If you want to participate virtually, we will have space in the sanctuary and perhaps fellowship hall for those who would like to be here in person. But you can join us virtually too. If you want to do that, please contact Jessica in the church office and she will give you the information for how to connect on, um, on Zoom. We're doing it by Zoom. So we just, Reed and I and President Linda uh, went to a training on Thursday. We think we're getting things figured out. So uh, there will be a way for you to join us either in person or virtually. So take a look at that. And uh, the rest of the uh, announcements in our bulletin are, are the same ones that we've had recently. And I'm so grateful for all your generosity uh, to our, uh, from our children in the Sunday school to uh, the giving tree was amazing. And we have one more uh, situation that we'd love to ask you to consider. And that is because we couldn't have any Lenten meals or Advent meals, our confirmation kids have not had an opportunity to raise any funds to go to camp. That's usually what that money goes to. So if you would like to sponsor or help sponsor a child or partially sponsor a student to go to confirmation camp, you can contact Reed or make a donation into the church office. Either way. Let's take a moment now to quiet our... Oh, there I am. Something... Oh, it's because it was needs to be down. Okay. Um, let's quiet our hearts and minds and just take a moment to breathe in the Holy Spirit and let out any troubles or things that are distracting you this morning. Know that where your hands and feet are, God is there too. And that you are exactly where you are supposed to be in this moment. Let's begin by standing and we will sing our opening song, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. The Lord be with you. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, pray with me. Creator God, of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our worship continues with the readings. The first reading today is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Thanks be to God. 
The second reading today is from Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions, and he came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? And they replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And then he said, Into what were you baptized? And they answered, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John is baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. Thanks be to God. Children, do you want to come forward for your children's message? You can have a seat right down on the carpet. And I hope the kids at home will get a little closer and that you have your little bowl of water ready. Today, kids, we are talking about Jesus. Surprise, right? Surprise, surprise, it's Jesus. But Jesus was baptized. Sarah just read to us about um, water. In the beginning, there was water, and the, God moved over the water and made heavens and earth and separated the water from the dry land. And then she read to us about Paul asking, who were you baptized in? And he laid their hands on them and said, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. How many of you have seen a baptism here? Anybody seen somebody get baptized in this church? A baby? You guys have. When your baby sister was baptized, right? And you guys have probably seen one too. You just you saw a baptism? So you might not remember your own, but you probably have seen one. And we say some things. We put water in this thing, in this big bowl, and we say words like, let me say this, um, it says, we give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters by your word. You created the world. That's what Sarah just read to us. And then God took care of Noah and his family, and he helped the Israelite slaves go through the water. And then John, Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when we are baptized... Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the sin that we live in. And so then we talk about that. And so we say to people, and we take their, their faith, and we put it on their bodies, and we say, you're baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And then we do this, and you are marked with the cross of Christ forever. And that never goes away. That's a mark that you can't see, but God can. And it's there, and it doesn't go away. Do you guys want to come up and mark yourselves with water? You can put one finger in, and then you can say, I'm a child of God. You can do that right on your forehead. See, it's just water, plain old regular water, but it's the words that make it special. Oh, you're almost there. You need it another two inches, and then you'd be good. Just make a little flat space. Can't kind of reach... How does that feel to remember that you are baptized? Is it pretty great? Yeah. So when you are getting ready, kids at home in the mornings or at night, you can take a, a little bit of water and just put that little cross back on your forehead to remember you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Let's pray, and you can, you can repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you, Thank you for baptism and the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of sins that, can that can never be taken away. Amen. All right, our worship continues with the singing of the Alleluia.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the, out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're like me, we have all had the situation where we have had to introduce ourselves to someone or a new group, maybe at a dinner party or a work event, a new group that we join, or those horrible icebreakers at a youth retreat. The question usually is, tell us something about yourself. Who are you? What do you do? And that's when the litany begins of our name, our work status, who we are in a family, our relationships. Mine might sound like a little like this. Hi, I'm Beth. I'm a pastor at Lord of Life Church. I grew up as the only girl in a family of five children. I went to college at Michigan State University and to seminary at Luther Seminary. I'm single, I live alone, I have two cats named Stella and Luna, and my little dog, Marty. I've raised three sons, they're all married to smart and talented women. I like to read, watch TV, and solve puzzles wonder what yours might sound like. If you look on Wikipedia at anybody's biography, it always starts out with a chart of their birth and perhaps death, any family relationships, parents, children, spouses, and then the accomplishments or what made them remembered in history show up. It seems like that statistical stuff is the most important. It's at the top. So who are you? What is your story? How do you identify in this world? I suspect your identity, like mine, is grounded in family and work. When we think about how we describe Jesus, we talk about God's work in the world. We say things like, Jesus is from Nazareth. He was born from Mary, a carpenter, a healer, a lover of justice and an advocate for the poor. But his identity is so much more. Hear this from our gospel again. And just as he came up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. It says the heavens were torn apart. In the Gospel of Mark, schizo, the word for to tear, a word that we use as the same root for schizophrenia today, is used just two times. Here in these opening verses of Mark, and then in chapter 15 when Jesus is crucified and the temple curtain is torn in two. 
So why is this important? Why schizo? Why torn apart? Why does Mark even mention it? Because when this happens, God is on the loose. These are the moments when heaven and earth are brought together and God is in the midst of all of it. Our country is hurting right now. Family and friends might be torn apart. Communities are wounded emotionally and physically. People are exhausted and fuses are short. And decision making is cloudy. I'm sure that during these past months, and certainly in this last week, you have had moments when you tried to identify who you are in this world. Where do you fit in these moments of history? Remember, God said, you are my son, the beloved. When you think about who you are in that list of accomplishments and statistics, did you include beloved child of God? That is one identity that is forever. Because jobs change, families change, friends come and go, we move from one place to another, but we are always God's beloved child. Today we remember and we mark Jesus' baptism. We do this on the first Sunday after Epiphany every year. Epiphany falls on January 6th, and then that next Sunday is always the baptism of our Lord. It's a good day to remember our own baptism and what it means for us, because most of us can't remember being baptized, but we usually can remember watching somebody else get baptized. It's a time to remember that we are God's creation and that God loves us. No matter what else happens in life, when we are baptized, it's a moment when we receive a promise from God. You are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And that can never change. The descriptive characteristics of life, what we do, what we look like, who we are to other people, they all might change. And we may make lousy decisions or do things we regret, say things that are hurtful, and yet we are still God's beloved child. Baptism offers forgiveness, but it also offers us responsibility and invitation. That is to see others as beloved children of God and treat them that way. The responsibility is that we may not always want to see others as beloved children of God, particularly when they are different from us in any of those important but merely descriptive attributes. Those are the things that describe them and us, but they don't define them or us. The invitation of baptism is that we realize we belong to a much bigger and much more interesting family in the family of God. There are people of all colors and sizes and shapes and gender and sexual identity, socioeconomic status, political party, and ethnic heritages. The challenge is, can you see those people who, are, who appear different from you, those people who may even strongly disagree with you as God's beloved child too? We will regularly fall short of God's ideal for us or God's desire for us in how we regard how we treat one another. And yet we are still God's beloved children. And that grants us the grace and gives us the strength to try again. The heavens were torn open. God is on the loose in this world and God is at work in all things. We are part of that work. We are the hands and feet of God's work. Our identity is not in our jobs, our heritage, or our relationships. Our identity is and always will be in Christ. That is indeed good news for us. And for that, we can all say, thanks be to God. 
Our worship continues with the singing of We Shall, Get, Shall We Gather at the River. Please stand. with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for your church, Lord. Allow your Holy Spirit to descend upon us and enliven us for mission to share the good news of the gospel. We pray for humanity. Our world is broken, Lord, and only through your Son will we be made whole again. Draw us together in love that we may be one body of believers. Teach us how to sow seeds of kindness, compassion, understanding, and acceptance of those who look, speak, act, and think differently than we do. We pray for peace, especially here in our own country. Lord, lead us on paths which can restore unity and help us to remember that healing begins with our own hearts, our own minds, and our own words which come out of our mouths. Seal our lips from words which incite discord and give wisdom to know when to speak up on behalf of those who have been mistreated. Lead us in the way of your beloved Son. And Lord, in your mercy. Our prayer. 
Sovereign God, we earnestly and fervently pray for nations and government leaders and for all elected officials. Inspire leaders to work for the common good of all, especially the oppressed and the overlooked people of the world. Turn us away from violence and teach us to live in peace. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, we pray for the earth which you have made. Sustain oceans and seas, rivers and lakes, fields and wetlands. Watch over dormant plants and hibernating animals as they rest in your care this winter. Renew your creation and protect all creatures from harm. Bless those who work the land and care for your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Comforting Lord, we pray for all of those in need. Protect children and vulnerable adults who depend on others for their daily care. Bless all caregivers, teachers, medical personnel, and first responders as they selflessly care for, teach, and protect others. Grant courage to those who put themselves at risk for others. <clears throat> Uphold those who struggle with depression, anxiety, and loneliness. Console the grieving and heal the sick. We especially pray for those on our Lord of Life prayer list and those that we name in our hearts now. We remember Don Thompson and her family on the death of Roger Thompson. <clears throat> we pray for all members of our church family as we are separated. Keep us connected in the unity of Jesus Christ until we can be together again. Renew your children in the covenant of baptism and empower us by your loving spirit to serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth in all the nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned into wine, he revealed your glory. And so, with the, all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray with confidence in the word our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ is shed for you. You may be seated. Taste, taste and see that the Lord is good. you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever. Amen. Now receive this blessing. May the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is Go, My Children, With My Blessing.